Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the podcast. This week, I was given the wonderful opportunity to be able to talk to Zoe from the So So Show. Now, she is a and the podcast lady. She does podcasting, that kind of thing. So it was really, really great to hear her perspective on Pacific podcasting in general and uh, just hear her thoughts on content creation as a whole. So thank you ever so much for coming back and joining me once again. And uh, I will now hand over to Zoe to explain a little bit more about what she does. Hello, um, my name is Zoe Hansen and I am the podcast lady. Fantastic. Welcome to my podcast, which is a bit odd considering you're the podcast lady <laughs> and you're on my podcast. Uh, I mean, how did this go? How did this come about? I mean, how did we meet? How did how did you get into podcasting? Like what's what's that world started? Oh, my gosh. With for you. Which, Which choose, question what? do you want to go for first? <laughs> it's, up to, it's up completely up to you. Welcome to the podcast where I throw multiple questions at you at once and see how you <laughs> see how you handle it. See what I want to pick out. Um, so podcasting. Well, I fell into podcasting because um, I did twenty years. I mean, it sounds like I've been in prison. I did twenty years on the radio, so audio has always been my thing. Um, I love audio. I love radio. I love podcasts because of the connection that it makes with the listener. Um, I think uh, it builds lots of trust. You can build a real connection to people. Now, obviously, doing a breakfast show on a commercial radio station is a little bit different to a podcast. But actually, is it? You know, you're still doing the same things. You're still trying to get your message across to the listener. Um, So uh, after 20 years, so I was on Capital Breakfast Show in London. I did Power FM down on the South Coast. Um, I did Heart FM as well on the breakfast show. Um, And then after 20 years, they decided to make the shows national. So um, I didn't really want to leave radio as such I didn't want to stop making audio I didn't want to stop talking to people and listening to their stories so I started to make my own podcast um, for the sort of Southampton SO postcode Um, and it was the so so show was born um, has flown absolutely flown so I decided to put all of that knowledge and all of that experience into a business and help people and businesses to make their own podcasts and to get the best out of them um, and to help them get going or coach them on what they're already doing and how they can do it better, (laughs) if you like. So the podcast lady was born and it's a very new business, but um you know we've got some really good clients and they are so happy with it because i suppose for anybody wanting to come up with a podcast as much as you've got something to say down the pub having a microphone doesn't make you a podcaster and so i wanted to create content that was great for that audience fantastic fantastic and, and you know, for me, it's always interesting to hear how people get to where they got. And you know, for me, I think it's a natural progression for what you used to do and what you do now. But what kind of got you into the process of like actually coaching, and what challenges, like mainly what the challenges are, have been since you started really coaching people on podcasting? Because for me, it's not really a common. Like, there's kind of two sectors for me: people who are like, "Yeah, I love to consume," fantastic, but. I would never know. I would never create one. No, that's inc- that's ridiculous, right? Or the other ones, which are like, I would love to, but I don't know how to. So, what would you kind of what What are the main hurdles that you found for people stopping, or, or you know, have, are, are, th- are they the two camps that you found yourself? Um, I didn't personally, but then I'm used to having a microphone in front of me. But I find that lots of businesses want to make a podcast. I think some people think that they should, um, and that's not necessarily a good thing, but I can help them. And I'm pretty honest, you know, and if I say, look, I don't think it's a podcast that you want. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a video or some 
video content or whatever that you want to concentrate on. Um, and, and yes, it's the, they've got something to say, but they don't know how to say it. Yeah. It's that kind of, I know I should be talking about it. I know I should be doing marketing. I should be doing this, should be doing that. I have fun conversations as it is. I mean, for me, I'll give you the bit of background because I don't think you know how, how my podcast started. Um, uh, and for those who are new, they may be interested. Long story short, we always fought the idea and always was good to have audio content and be in a position where you could create audio content as a, as a video production company. It's quite easy for us because we just rip the, rip the audio from the video, <laughs> to be honest. And there you go, audio content. Um, but I wanted to create something that was unique to audio content that wasn't necessarily tied to the video stuff we were doing. So, and, and it sort of aligned with then what came to be lockdown at the time. I was like, well, fantastic. We can't go out and create anything. So <laughs> the podcast was really led into and you know it was one of those things where i could connect with people still i could still sharpen my quote-unquote interviewer hat so to speak um to help you know really keep that fresh and because in a lot of production roles i was doing the interviewing so to speak so me being a better interviewer is always going to be valuable and then you know as lockdown progressed and slowly unlocked it still became a very powerful asset for us to use for social media for marketing for showcasing you know what we do and how we do it in a candid way you know as we were talking about uh before the podcast kind of started you know the point of this podcast is to be candid because for a long time it was right these are the questions <laughs> these are uh, these is very rigid it's very uh you know this is how we're going to do it this is what we're going to do this is how we're going to explain it and it just kind of felt and came off that way i mean when you work with people and you work with your own show do you kind of have a set of questions do you like how do you how do you go about starting the conversation? Do you have like a set of topics you want to cover or um so I think it's about knowing what you want from it. Your start point is the end point. Um so both with my own podcast and with uh, a new business that wants to make a podcast, we have to know we have to focus on the specifics. Okay, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to bring you more clients? Do you want it to entertain people? Where do you want to connect with them? Why do you want to connect with them? And then we can work out, you know, I suppose it's like, uh, I suppose if you're scrolling through music or a menu, you know, um, okay, I want to eat Italian tonight you're not then going to go to a tapas restaurant. You know, it's that. It's making sure that you are fulfilling the needs of your listener. Um, and it also needs to answer the questions. I think um, when you're talking about interview questions, when I interview people, I ask them questions that I think our audience would like answered. So... Um, just recently, I interviewed Craig Revel Horwood from uh, Strictly, but I was down to interview him because he's appearing in the Mayflower Theatre pantomime. So we talked a little bit about pantomime and we talked about um, how hard work it is, but we also talked about Strictly and what's going on with Strictly this year and the role that he has in it and the dancers and how hard work that is. And, you know, you're, you're by interviewing someone, you're not just on there to sort of sell them. You are answering questions that your audience want answered. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And I think it's one of those things why, you know, people always ask me, oh, what are we going to talk about? How are we going to go over it? And it's like, well, I, to be honest, I come up with the next question as you're explaining the, the previous one, if that makes sense. Right. So it's just something that jumps into I mean, my mind for me. Yeah. I mean, you, you need to have a sort of plan about what you talk about, um, you know, but there will be subjects that I know that I'm going to ask somebody about, you know, um, and it's always, you know, you can, if you are interviewing someone and you're doing it for the first time, you can go with who, what, why, where, when, 
all of that stuff, you know, that's a pretty good starting point, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it gives you a good base to then build off and get other ideas. And, you know, it also kind of depends on the style of your show, right? If it, Because the reason why we don't do like structured interview questions specifically is because it can come across quite clinical and it can come across quite... Okay, it can, but I think that you can work on that. I think that you can work on, you know, you can have a set question, but you ask it in a different way or in, you know, quite conversationally or, you know, you wouldn't go to um, a meeting with, you know, those clinical questions and, and go question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. You know, it's exactly the same as that. It is a conversation, but I think the most important thing when you are interviewing is listening. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And it's I think the same is true whenever you're in like a networking like a networking situation or you're in a meeting group with a client or even just in like a personal relationship, like just listen to the other person, right? Because you can actually get, because a lot of people are always like, oh, I'm really nervous about being on a podcast. I'm really nervous about going to networking. I'm really nervous having this meeting with such and such. And in reality, if you're not really talking, what are you nervous about? <laughs> if you end up asking questions that help them, like the other person talk more, and you're just listening to what they're saying, it, it makes it a lot more comfortable for you because there's less spotlight on you and more spotlight on them. Yes, yes. And and that's what you're there to do. If you're interviewing someone and you're just talking, what's the point? <laughs> you know? Uh, you can give people questions that will send them on to the next answer or the next story. But, um, and, and I think the most important thing if you are interviewing someone is do your research. You know, make sure that you know uh, it's almost like a boss used to say to me, ask the questions that you know the answers to. Don't throw them off. Know the answer first. And you know that that's what the answer is going to be. If you watch somebody like Graham Norton, he knows he's going to get a good story out of someone by asking about such and such. He already knows the story, but he's just giving them the little pathway to give us that story. Hey, hey, talk about this, because this is a good idea to talk about. I can't think possibly why. <laughs> but, yeah, talk about this. I mean, here's a, here's a question which I, I've i heard a lot of back and forward about in respect to when should you monetize your podcast, e.g. in placing actual ads or sponsored ads or sponsored messages into your podcast. Firstly, like, how big should you be? And then, second, like, where within the podcast... I'd be interested in hearing your opinion because I mine's a bit, I would say like middle to like in regards to placement, like middle towards the end because I know some people and I've seen some people do it. Welcome to the da -da -da -da, and then they go straight into an ad. Depends how big you are. Depends what you're doing. Depends if somebody wants to pay you to do it. Is my answer there? I think, you know, if you're making a podcast for a for a small business, you're almost already sponsored because you're talking about your business. But if somebody comes along and wants to sponsor that, I suppose why not? And it's up to you. You know, it's got to be a gut feeling. Um, we've just signed a sponsor um, to the So So Show. Um, which is Visit Southampton. Now, it's absolutely aligned with our values and what we do. We talk about everything that's going on in and around Southampton, all of the great people, all of the great happenings. So we are absolutely aligned with that sponsor. Um, and I know that I was approached beforehand by different businesses to sponsor that podcast, but it just wasn't right. And I think it's a gut feel. Um, yeah, and then and then, where do you put the adverts? So we put them in the place that is going to get the best value for them. So we introduced the show. Um, this is the so-so show. 
with Visit Southampton, light up your social life. And then we might talk about something that's going on socially. So, um, and then we also give them that tagline again, um, just before we do the what's ons at the end. And it's absolutely bob on for them. I think the, the, yeah, the best places for them are where they sit naturally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say as well. I mean, I think I really related to the, you know, why are you working with a specific business or brand specifically? Does it align with what you're doing? I think in your case, it's a perfect match because, you know, from the story of the So So Show, it's, it's about Southampton, right? And that area. So, of course, why was it not sponsored by Visit Southampton? It just makes complete sense, you know. And, but then also, yeah, I think, you know, for me, I think it's important to have it short as well like short enough where it's but if you're going to put it in a good placement it needs to be quite short in my opinion but it's I'll... different it, it, it depends what you're trying to do with it you know and you know you you sell it for whatever it is you know it might be a pure brand sell you know but it depends what they're offering you <laughs> you know it's not easy to you know i i i've said to lots and lots of people do not go into podcasting and think you're going to make money. I think it's an it's another arm of your marketing. You know, it's a marketing tool. It's something that you can repurpose quite a lot, but don't go into it thinking you're going to make lots of money. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And I think it's one of those things that people sometimes get misunderstood about when they go into it. They see it as this like quote unquote golden cash cow and be like, oh, I can make loads of money because loads of people are going to sponsor me to talk about their products and yada, 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 yada. I think in reality, is that possible that that can happen? Yes. Is it 0.011%? Sure. Most likely, you know, and... and I it, also... depends. it depends, you know, if you build your audience, you know, my, my thought process was always build the audience first and then take on a sponsor. Because if you start with however many listeners they're not going to pay as much as they will when you're a bit further down the line yeah absolutely and i could yeah i completely agree but i also think it's like how how much are you diluting what your what your use case is for example for us the podcast is a way for me to talk about what we do in a candid way which gives us amazing social media content because there's no other there's no other way to have candid or or, or very harder to have candid ways of me talking about what we do so, so where do you use your podcast then? So ours is YouTube based, which is which is against everything that everyone has suggested to me ever about doing a podcast ever. The full podcast episodes only got on YouTube at the moment. And and the main reason for that from like a, a business context is we're a video production company. So I want the eyes on YouTube because that's where we put the majority of our work. That's the where we put the majority of our video content, which is what I want ideally our ideal clients or our, or our audience to consume because then they're more likely to think video or, or think me when they think video. So there's nothing against the podcast platforms and we will go to them when it makes sense. But at the moment, it's working in the what I, in how I want it to do, which is take social traffic from Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. and then put it onto YouTube. For, for us to view and for people to potentially listen to a podcast which helps watch time on, on, on YouTube which YouTube loves along with every other platform in the world um, but Do then you all... use it on social media as well then? Yes, so we, we cut up clips for social media um, as well from this podcast or from every podcast episode um, and then we send the full episode out on YouTube Eventually, we will go to the other podcasting platforms, as I say, when when it becomes relevant, because the argument has always been, how am I, like, if I put it on one place, I'm, I'm guaranteed if people want to watch the full episode, they're going to go to that place because they can't go anywhere else. But then the question is, you know, am I possibly not getting seen by a larger audience because, or, or you know, newer people because I'm not on iTunes, Apple, Apple, so on, so on, so on. I mean, I'd be interested in your opinion on that. I mean, the uh, on the balance of that. I mean, just as a just as a podcast provider, I think it makes absolute necessity sense that you need to be on the podcast, the traditional podcasting platforms. Yeah, well, I don't know. I I think uh, I think you do well to 
be on YouTube and put it out as a podcast, just as audio. I think, you know, because those podcasts, the audio, you reach a whole new audience. You know, uh, I, I'm a great fan of um, audio filling dead time, you know, making dinner, going for a walk, taking the dog for a walk, all of that stuff. You know, I know lots of people that do that. Um, and so with any any podcast, I say, right, just fire it out everywhere, everywhere, so that people have a chance to find you. But I think, you know, video podcasts are great. They're brilliant. But do I have half an hour, 45 minutes to sit down and watch a podcast? No, but can I put it on in the background? Yes. Now, that's not to say that anybody else, I, I, there's a good friend of mine, Andrew, and he only watches video podcasts. He doesn't listen to podcasts, but but he, you know, he's very visual. He needs to watch it. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a place for all of them. Um, and it's just finding that medium that your audience is going to use. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think it's also not setting your heart on, you know, as I've said in this podcast and also in previous content, I'm not against putting it on podcast platforms. To be completely honest, it's just a time investment now because I've got to do I've got to do 60 episodes in one go, which is not going to be easy. Um, but, you know, I think there's a huge merit. I mean, you know, advice I would give to anyone who's starting out is start on those platforms early because it means the hurdle of getting into them is not that high because you don't have to do 60 episodes like in my case or 70 episodes in my case, for example. That's the main hurdle about why we haven't done it because of the sheer amount of time investment it's going to be for me to put to backtrack all of the episodes we've done onto onto the platforms. And also how does I mean, I'd be interested to hear if you do know, is there do you get penalized for like batch outputting like that? I don't know. I don't know is the honest answer there. I don't know. I think I think that's hard because you are starting at zero. So we put out our podcast weekly um, and then we will use our social media to back all of that up. So, but ours is because it's a weekly thing, you know, sometimes the content is less relevant if you're listening to one from a month ago, two months ago. So that's why we get everything out there and it's quite immediate. But um, I don't know if they penalise you for putting all of that stuff on. I would be interested. I would be interested to find out because sometimes they're like, why are, the, why, are we f why are you flooding our servers with 70 episodes? What's going on? But no, I mean, I think it's an interesting one because it's about, you know, a lot of what we're talking about here is how people consume, isn't it? And I think it's really interesting because, you know, for us, we put a lot on and social media is heavy hitting for us, you know, from from an Instagram side and LinkedIn side. That's where we get the bulk of our interaction. So for me, it was how do I quote unquote automate the process or or or, or create content tailored around those platforms? You know, for me, I mean, have you do you have you found that since those platforms have really started embracing audio a lot more and they've really started embracing video more specifically a lot more? Have you had like an uptick in in your in your click through or et cetera that you know actually using them as platforms? We've always gone pretty heavy on all of it, you know from the beginning, you know I knew it was a great idea. I knew that instinctively people would listen and people like local content and they like to have something to. Um, they like to know what's going on. You know, they like to hear you talking about the pub that they went for lunch at last week, you know. So, you know, that was the original idea and and that has proved pretty successful. Um, but people can, you know, see our content with, you know, audiograms or, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll post up in on Facebook and Instagram mostly about what's on the episode that week. Um, yeah, yeah, it sort of, it just all works together. It's important, isn't it, to, to kind of marry all those things you're doing, you know, we, what we try to do is we try to make sure that, you know, everything marries up, 
so that if if you know something goes live on linkedin it's gone live on instagram and facebook at the same time etc you can do it the other way where you can like premiere something on a specific platform that sometimes can work depending on what you're doing like especially if it's something big like a you know if we did a feature film or we did a short film or etc we could only put it on youtube and be like we're premiering it on youtube and we create content and start leaking it on social and so on and that works but you know i think it's and it, that's why we always ask that question because it's it's always interesting for me to hear how other people sort of quote unquote leverage social media to build their funnel or, or push push people to where they would like them to go to consume the larger content or etc because you know for us we just try to create as much content everywhere as we possibly can. So that's why the podcast, you know, you may be, you may be making the argument then that why is my podcast not on audio-based platforms then, if that's my, if that's my motto. But, you know, for me, it's, it, it's similarly a time investment. Um, it's a quite a huge time investment at the moment. That's why it's not been there. But for me, it's I think one... that's probably everybody with a podcast. You know, that's another thing to note, right? Don't go into it to make money. It's going to take a lot of work. It's way more work than you think it is. Um, and then also making a podcast, I always say you have to be very patient. It's not going to bring you the rewards in three days, you know, and you'll watch those numbers slowly, slowly rise. And, you know, but you've got to be consistent and you've got to be patient. I think that's the same with any content, though. I don't think it's just uh, just just podcast related. I mean, we say the same with video. We watch it with we've watched it with blogs before, etc. You know, it's it's about being uh, you know very consistent. If you're gonna say you're gonna do a weekly show, okay, are you ready to commit to a weekly show for a year, right? If you're gonna do like a bi-weekly show, okay, you need to do that for a year, possibly two years, right? If you if you're gonna do daily content, okay, can you do that for a year? Yeah. Right. If and what's funny is on. when you say about that, that the the amount of blogs that I see that start by saying, sorry, I've been quiet. And you go, well, look, either you're committed or you're not. You know, I learned this very, very early on. I used to write a blog called Bad Mum. Um, uh, I'm a single parent. Um, my daughter is now eight years old. And I think I wrote for about five years. I wrote once a week and I committed to putting out a blog every Tuesday. And sometimes it was hard slog. Um, but but I had to be accountable to that. And I, you know, some weeks it would be fine and I would write it two days before or whatever. Some days I would be writing it while I was sat in my daughter's room waiting for her to go to sleep. <laughs> But it has to be consistent. You know, you've bought into this, so don't don't lose it. And I think it's really important to to have the commitment that you can with it, but also understand that in a world where you're you're busy, because everyone's busy, right? But when you're like busy with other things that you prioritize higher, that doesn't mean you can't create the content. You just need to either outsource parts of that content creation. For example, like I don't, I haven't edited this podcast in I don't even know how long at this point because it's not, it, it it's not. Does it become ten minutes then? <laughs> no, no. It, this it, one might after I've witted on. <laughs> you know, but for me, it's one of those things where it's about understanding what's extremely valuable for you personally to do within the business. That's not saying the content we're creating today is not valuable. It is absolutely very valuable, hopefully, to the right set of people. But the main thing is to understand and appreciate that do I necessarily need to be the person who edits this this episode? Not necessarily. No, I don't necessarily. I well, could... it's almost like the same as a you know an accountant. You know, you've got the books, you've got the bank statements. But are you going to do your books? Are you going to do your your accounts at the end of the year? No. You pass it over because they know what they're doing, and you're not the expert in it you know yeah and it's about understanding what you are the expert in i think and, and and being comfortable in that as well right like you know the guys who 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 will be editing this and, and do edit the podcast for me you know they they are a very key role in in the company's growth now because they take a lot of stuff off my plate that 
I don't really want back on it and I can't really have back on it, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, the 400 people you've got working for you, you know, they they need to do something, don't they? <laughs> I wish I had 400. I, I, I do in the respect of how much we could get done. I don't when it looks to the amount of money that would cost to have 400 people work for you. Um, you know, but I think it's again, it's, it's talking about scale of growth, isn't it? You know, as 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 things grow and as things develop, it's about understanding what's the best suited thing now, if that makes sense. You know, what what what's the best thing for you to do? And when you're starting out, you should learn how to edit a podcast, right? I I've been editing audio for a very long time because I've video I've been a video editor since I was twelve, so. You know, I've been editing audio in one way or another for a very long t- for that way. So it wasn't exactly a difficult jump for me to go to editing audio solely content because it was something I've been doing forever. So you know, for me, it was one of those things which was always the progression. And to an extent, it felt like because I was a video creator first, so it was kind of a progression backwards. So in some ways, so it, you know, you can you can still do it, but also there's huge amounts of value in just doing audio based content on its own. Because as you say, people are going to fill it with different uses of time, right? They're going to listen to it at a different moment of time. And when I get my ass into gear, it will go on to podcast platforms, I promise. And, um, you know. But at uh, the same time, I think it's when people want to make a podcast, get started. Because your first podcast will never be as good as your 10th podcast, you learn things as you go, you know, the same as editing, you know, uh, you know, when you first start editing, it's like teaching your nan to use the remote. It's, it's just hard work and you can't get your head around it, but then all of a sudden it clicks and you understand how to do it. And then you get faster and, you know, like, like we're using the accountancy analogy, you know, to take you, it would take you hours and possibly days to file your tax return but an accountant will do that in an hour or whatever you know it's about you know learning and progressing and you know sending the idea on yeah absolutely and i think it's one of those things about understanding you know let's say you have an hourly rate okay what can you do in the time which you're saving by outsourcing that thing right like as long as you're making more money than what you're paying out then you're still in profit and you're still making money, right? Like if we're in business, that's what we're looking to do. So that's the only way I think about outsourcing. Now you need to be careful with how much you outsource because your costs can skyrocket. If you just go, I'm going to outsource everything and I'm going to do nothing. It's like, well, you know, it might be challenging for you to to continue to grow a business if you do that um, as long. But, you know, the reality of the fact is you know how much cash flow you have or haven't got right or or potentially have or haven't got so it's about understanding you know do you want to grow fast or do you want to grow steady but continually Uh, i think in my perspective from what Um, i've seen anyway so you so you've done 60 podcasts how do you decide which subjects to talk about so to be honest that really depends on the guest to be honest with you uh so how do you decide which guests to get on So for me, it's anyone who I personally want to find out more about or I think would make a really good conversation or the the key is actually what could they what do I think they're going to likely say that will be valuable to the people who are going to listen? Because all I am is a is a tool in a box to help people hear what you're going to say. That's 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 it. And I'm uh, it's my job to help guide this conversation in a way which I think my audience is going to enjoy that's that's the point as we were discussing earlier and you know for me the podcast has always been something which i've enjoyed doing still to this day haven't made a penny on it technically uh you know you could argue that it's some has done some stuff for marketing which in turn we've benefited from okay fantastic but directly no absolutely haven't and probably never will that's not the point of the podcast for me the point of the podcast is you know and i think you're very similar is if you're going to monetize it, it will make sense when you monetize it because you'll see an opportunity. We're like, yeah, that clicks, that works. Yeah, you know, like like Visit Southampton for you, for example. But I think, you know, for, for us where we are at the moment, I don't think that's necessarily going to happen anytime soon. But that's because it also isn't the point. The point of it isn't to do that. The point of it is to 
have a conversation and hopefully educate people on firstly how you can create content and and create valuable content but then also how that could be valuable to a business owner okay so who has been your favorite guest and two questions who's been your favorite guest and who have you got what what you would say the most out of that is a very interesting set of questions. I don't have a favorite guest because everyone's favorite for a different reason. So I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer <laughs> that one. I wasn't looking for me. I wasn't looking. Oh for, yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's def- definitely you. Def- definitely you, Zoe. Definitely you, one hundred percent. Now, I mean, for me, every podcast is very different. So it's it's one of those things which is something which I don't. It's very unique because every conversation I never really know where it's going to go because I don't yeah. I don't do as much research as I probably should in your eyes uh, on on my guests but that's very deliberate because I want to have that level of exploration with that guest on on yeah. those topics because it gives me those it gives me the questions which I want to ask yeah. right it gives me the level of intrigue specifically it's very much like dating yes you know what it, look lots of people will <laughs> Google their dates before they go and meet them. I don't. I go there and I have a conversation. I find out about them. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is like that. And it will either and it will either work or it won't. You know, it's it, it's one of those things. Do you, have you ever had any podcasts that don't work? We've had a few that are just technically just gone horribly wrong. But and to, then, uh, and then we either refilm them or we just okay. can them. Like there's a certain level which I I I do make sure the podcast reaches before yeah. going live. Um, we had one the other, the other week actually. Uh, my microphone died halfway through. I was at uh, my office using video mics, which have batteries in them, which die. Um, and then the audio in the center, uh, so the internet in the center, also died halfway through <laughs> as well. So it's a joy, it was, isn't it? so it was just like this is an incredible podcast that is completely unusable um, because my mic peaks halfway through of it and. And then the and the entire internet connection just dies horribly halfway through, which is fantastic. It was very entertaining for about five minutes, and then I was yeah, like, well, and then it just that's becomes really annoying. Pain. It's really annoying, but yeah. I've I've um when I was working on the radio, I did I remember doing two interviews and forgetting to press record. Oh no. Oh, luckily the record company were recording and managed to send me the interview, but oh my gosh. Yeah. That, that does happen more than you can care to imagine, even on film sets, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the main reason why on a, like a video production is because we will cut cameras and it's the same button to start and stop. So what will sometimes yeah. happen is we'll press it, we'll press it again, yeah. and then we'll go and do something else, then we'll come back and press it again. And of course what we've done is just kill the recording right so that's why you have like big red lights on everything when we're ready yeah. so yeah. when we're live and when we're recording and that's where they have it i think on radio studio as well where the mics are red as well they have red lights on mics in some radio studios are you recording this yeah are you sure yeah, I, am. I am i'm don't <laughs> worry i definitely am i definitely am 100 percent. um but i have also had it with podcasts where i'm like oh no i didn't record because we split the guests audio and mine okay so it's like oh no this is going to be a really, really boring episode because it's just me <laughs> talking to myself. Oh God! Um, yeah. But some, yeah. I mean, it ha- it happens, and and that's life sometimes. But I wouldn't, you know, for for the listener, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let that stop you from doing it. It's about learning from it and being just yeah. human and just being honest with the person and be like, look, there was a technical issue. Like yeah. I said with the with the guy that we had last week, I've reinvited him, and you know, we're hopefully going to refilm it. Because it was a really great interview mm-hmm. when I was able to actually host it in uh, when the internet allowed me to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? um, and he's quite local, so we might we might actually do it in person, which removes half of the technical issues which which come cool. with doing it via Zoom, which is fantastic. But you know that for me was kind of everything I wanted to wanted to cover today. I mean, I know you've kind of asked me some questions already, but. I think it's valuable as well to is there any specific targeted questions or any topics that you want to ask me specifically that you've had that jumped into your mind before we wrap up? No, I don't think so. I think I think look, if you're thinking of starting a podcast, go do it. Go do it. You will learn it. It is hard, but be really specific about who you want to reach why you want to reach them and what you want them to do. 
Um, and think about how somebody listens as well. So where they are, what they're doing. Um, think about, um, yeah, why you want to reach them and how you're going to reach them as well. So it's not just a case of putting something out on social media. I had a, I had a coach come to me um, as in a business coach, not like a 52 seater. Um, and the question that she gets asked time and time again is what does a coach do? What is a coach? So we made a podcast called what is a coach? And now when she gets asked that question, she says, have a listen to my podcast. There you go. Fantastic. And that, that, that right there just sums up why you should do content. Ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to leave it there. <laughs> I think that's the, that's the best answer I've ever had in regards to why you should do content. Um, it's very key. It just gives the answer to every question which your audience might have that you consistently yeah. get answered. That's the yeah. that's the principle. That's the honest answer. For those people who are interested, where can they find the So So Show? So the So So Show is on all of the podcast platforms. You just search for the So So Show um, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Um, Spotify, any of those, uh, you can have a listen to that. This week, um, I've done an interview with Sooty and put that out. He's not very loud. <laughs> um, so you can listen to the So So Show. You can get in touch with the podcast lady. Um, you can get in touch with me at the moment on my website, which is zoehanson.co.uk. Fantastic. Thank you for so much for your time, Zoe. No worries. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, ladies and gents, for joining me once again. I hope you took value from this episode. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week when we'll be interviewing a brand new guest. And, uh, yeah, it was really good to talk to Zoe about everything podcast and hear her perspectives on uh, podcasting and content creation in general. So if you did enjoy this episode and you're over on YouTube, then make sure to leave this video with a like. I'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. And I'll see you very, very soon.